top stories, Premier Abi calls for actions to mitigate economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic in the country. South Sudan calls for more support in battling COVID-19. Hello and thank you all for joining us. I'm Tabitha John. You're watching Addis News Hour. Stay with us. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abi Ahmed has called for all appropriate actions to mitigate economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic in the country. Abi tweeted that, quote, to mitigate the adverse impact of COVID-19 on our country, it is critical to take measures to protect employment and income, scale up safety net programs to the most vulnerable, maintain the supply chain of key commodities and support the productive sectors of the economy. Ensuring agricultural productivity is also critical critical to our food security. We will ensure uninterrupted supplies of fertilizers, improved seeds and pesticides to prevent any potential supply shortages, he added. Abi said his government will heavily invest in the health system as part of the nation's economic responses, justifying that insufficient public health measures can prolong the economic crisis. Ethiopia has reported three new cases of coronavirus infection out of the 745 samples tested. This totaled the cases in the country to 114. One of the three confirmed cases is a Chinese national residing in the town of Sabeta, or Romia Regional State, according to the Ministry of Health. Ethiopia has so far registered three deaths and 16 recoveries from the virus. እንኳን <laughs> Hello? Unquan Abroater Rasan. Melkam Baal, the Malet Bayu at Makoyet. Rasun and Nayem, your Dwachon, Kakorona virus it up. Ethiopian Ministry of Health says close to 4,000 people have been in quarantine since the onset of the corona pandemic in the country. There is high threat of further spread of the virus as people are entering the country through its different corridors. In an exclusive interview with ETV, State Minister of Health Derajik Daguma said, if Ethiopians are not cementing their cooperation, there would be more infections in the upcoming rainy season. Habtamwa Shagri tells you more.
Ethiopia is using various mechanisms to promote public awareness on the coronavirus pandemic across the country. The country is also mobilizing the available resources to contain the spread of the virus in short time before it causes severe socioeconomic damage. In an exclusive interview with ETV, State Minister of Health Jorge Daguma said individuals' tolerance on the graveness of the pandemic is increasing. The community was in good shape in the beginning of the outbreak of COVID-19, but we have seen some intolerances among the community about the pandemic. Thus, we tried to assess the problem. Personally, I don't believe that Ethiopians have less know-how about COVID-19. The ministry's short survey results shows we have good information about it, but it hasn't resulted in behavioral change among them. The ministry plans to start door-to-door -door awareness raising services to bring behavioral change in our community. The state minister stressed implementing the state of emergency is also critical to control the spread of the pandemic. The government needs to inspect realization of rules and regulations that have been adopted in the country and are now instrumental in fighting the virus through a state of emergency. The community organized by legal executives as well as other institutions are not that much effective in enforcing these rules and regulations. He added the ministry finalizes its preparations to open five new medical centers in various regional states across the country, particularly for laboratory testing of COVID-19. We have to expand the COVID-19 laboratory testing centers in a bit to know the expansion rate of the pandemic. Thus, we have five active COVID-19 laboratory testing centers in Addis Ababa. Except three regional states, all have COVID-19 laboratory testing centers and have already started testing. This week, we will open five additional testing centers in the country. This will enable the nation to handle more laboratory tests a day. The region noticed the number of quarantined individuals is increasing due to open corridors of the country. We have two kinds of quarantine systems. Firstly, we have quarantined individuals that are using Bol International Airport. Secondly, we have quarantined individuals who are crossing various corridors of the nation to enter to Ethiopia. Thus, we have now quarantined 4,000 individuals. The state minister suggested exerting further efforts to make a sound control in all corridors for a higher importation of the virus. We suspect there are entrants to Ethiopia. Thus, Addis Ababa, Oromia Special Zone, Redawa, Eastern Amara State, Benishangul Gumus, among others, are the most vulnerable areas for the importation and the spread of the virus through the travels. Ethiopia is increasing its level best to control the impact of the pandemic, the regis said. Ethiopian Ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Abdulaziz Ahmed, said his consulate and the government of Ethiopia are doing their level best to repatriate citizens surviving there in a difficult situation. The Ethiopian citizens who entered Saudi Arabia through Yemen are voicing their concern from the center where they are exposed to the COVID-19 pandemic. Daniel Kasahun has more. The Ethiopian consulate in Saudi Arabia and the government of Ethiopia are stepping up efforts for the repatriation of thousands of Ethiopians, including some who are suspected of suffering from coronavirus. The citizens who entered into Saudi Arabia through Yemen are voicing their concern from the concentration center where they are exposed to the COVID-19 pandemic. But the deportation of Ethiopians requires pre-departure medical screening Otherwise, it exacerbates the spread of COVID-19 to the country. In consultation with the government, we have been able to repatriate citizens from Saudi Arabia for long. We had that experience before the outbreak of coronavirus. Now we are doing our level best to help Ethiopians to get all the facilitation to be back home. Saudi Arabia has imposed a strict lockdown to contain COVID-19 that has closed many areas of the economy. Transporting citizens from where they are concentrated requires time, expenses and patience. 
As at the migrant speak it, we hear it also from other sources. They are in a difficult situation. We know they are struggling to save their lives. They have to pay patience. There comes a time for them to go home. The government has to get prepared to welcome them and put them in quarantine. The United Nations was calling for a temporary suspension of the deportations to give Ethiopian authorities time to plan properly for the migrant safe repatriation. Guys, um, so this is a statue, or I guess like a, an image of Darartu Tulu, which is uh, she's a two-time gold medalist. So what do we got behind us? All right, we have behind us a first generation car um, during the time of Hala Selassie. The Ministry of Urban Development and Construction has issued a new directive to help control the spread of coronavirus within the construction sector. Briefing the media, Minister of Urban Development and Construction Aisha Mohammed said the issuance of the directive is the first stride to minimizing the outbreak of COVID-19 in the construction sector. Uh, and then, yeah, the construction site like Firstly, it's necessary to allocate health experts to follow employees' health status. 
If health problem happens, the health expert needs to report about the case to the contractor or the company. The health experts, along with project managers, need to work to raise employees awareness about COVID-19 pandemic as well as how to protect themselves and their parents from this pandemic. When employees are on duty, contractors need to check up their temperature at least two times a day. If they found high body temperature, they have to report it to health institutions immediately. The new guideline compels construction projects to clean construction materials as well as ban the entrance of people other than construction staff members into construction sites. The first aid kits must be available at any construction site and every moment transported by organization vehicles or employees can use the public transport based on the state of emergency. Every employee needs to implement other precautionary measures. Allocating responsible person is critical to follow all these precautions as well as reporting any problem in construction sites. Implementing shifting is important to exercise social distancing in every construction site.